Okay. Wonderful friends, good evening and welcome to the Spiritual Side of Virginia. It's so good to be with all of you here today. We're going to start by reading a message from the book Our Daily Bread, psychographed uh, through by Emmanuel, psychographed through the blessed hands of the medium Chico Xavier. Message number 66, Goodwill. See to it that you live prudently. Paul, uh, uh, chapter 5, verse 15. Good will find, good, good will finds work to be done. Work leads to renewal. Renewal finds the good. The good expresses the spirit of service. The spirit of service brings understanding. Understanding brings humility. Humility wins love. Love leads to self-denial. Self-denial reaches the light. The light promotes self-betterment. Self-betterment sanctifies the individual. The sanctified individual converts the world to God. Proceeding prudently through simple goodwill, the individual reaches the divine kingdom of the light. Let us pray, dear friends, feeling the presence of God, dear Mother, Father God, you're so grateful that you provide us this space where we cherish our true essence. Immortal spirits. We praise you for the beauty of learning, the opportunity of growing and progressing. We feel the embrace of the spirit doctors here, nurses and parents who kindly approaches during the session to treat us deeply. Feeling your guidance, certain of your protection, we ask for your permission co-create this session with you and so be it. Friends, this morning Mentor Joseph was telling me, think about it Vanessa, everyone who goes to the Spirit Center like you, they have problems too. Yes, and no matter how, how hard we try to be perfect, we're not perfect. But tonight we're going to continue this reflection on our commitment to the call of the Christ. Some people are going to tell us, but I'm not Chico Xavier. Well, Jesus has not only come for him but for all of us. Chico Xavier was not born Chico Xavier. He was made into Chico Xavier. The question is, by the end of this reincarnation, what are we going to say? Have we become blank or not blank? So we are so privileged that we have friends who are like-minded. They are not here, but they are here now. And Gerardo Lemos Neto and João Pedro Pablo are here to help us revisit Chico Xavier's legacy in ways that can inspire us. 
I'm not going to say more because you know them already, right? Let it begin. Recording. Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm going to put the slides on so it's easy, right? If I leave it on. Hello everyone, I'm very happy to be here again, so let's continue to talk about Spirit-Based Commitment Part 2, all right? From John chapter 15, verse 13 and 14, greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. And Jesus taught us, you are my friends if you do what I command. Are we friends of Jesus or not? What do you think? It's said by him, right? Do we do what he commanded? Has to do, or kind of, because if we do kind of something that he commanded, we are kind of Jesus' friend, right? <laughs> Not so surely. <laughs> so, spirit is commitment is that is to do what Jesus commanded us to do. Of course, we know that. Spiritist doctrine changed our perspective of life, right? After we get to know Spiritism, we all change our perspective. And it's a very big expansion of our consciousness. And as Mr. Albert Einstein said, the mind that opens to a new idea, to a new perspective, never returns to its original size. So that after we know Spiritism, Spiritist doctrine, Jesus Christ word, we can never go back and pretend we don't know it. That's not how it works, right? As Vanessa was telling us, after this life, when we arrive in the spiritual plans, we cannot, we cannot say, oh, I don't know that, because we did. So what did we do differently from others? That's the problem. And Chico Xavier, in the program King of Fogo in 1971 said, we are on the edge of new times in which science will open for us all, an immense future in the universe. So we are almost in the dawn of this new era where science we will begin to understand and to prove everything that Spiritist Doctrine and Jesus Christ was telling us from 2000 year, years ago and from 170, 160 years ago with Allan Kardec and from the past century with Chico Xavier. Of course, the spirits through Chico Xavier. And we have changed our perspective of life. We have already achieved an expansion of our consciousness. And now we must understand that we are in the dawn of a new era where we are going to face cosmic integration. 
Cosmic in integration is to understand our role in everything. It transcends what we are and what we are here for. And we understand with science already that our conscience is a non-locality being. And because of that, we can understand more about our spirituality. As Jesus taught us on John 14, verse 2, in my Father's house there are many mansions, many dwellings. And Chico Xavier, in the same program in 1971, at the TV in Sao Paulo, said, We will understand that we are part of the universal family that we are not the only world created by God. And so that we have the perspective, the expansion of our conscience, the responsibility to understand our cosmic integration. And for that, what is our role in this part? Building a better world. That's what Jesus commands us. We must build a better world. We must do every effort that we can do to really start building this other world. Uh, at the same program, uh, it, it is uh, tran transcript to another book, Plantão de Respostas. Uh, this was the second program, Pinga Fogo, which took part in December 23rd, 1971, at the TV2P station in Sao Paulo, and was broadcast to all Brazil. And up to this date, is the TV program that reached it uh, the most significant uh, audience. audience. Almost 80% of all Brazilian TV sets were watching Chico Xavier on the 23rd of December 1971. And Chico told us we are very close to a major planetary transformation the social, spiritual, emotional, and physical calamities will be all over the planet. Do we know that already? Yeah. How about the COVID problem, right? How about, about uh, depression calamity everywhere? the suicidal calamity everywhere, right? All over the world. So we are feeling this. And Chico told us, Emmanuel claims that the earth will be a regenerative world around 2057. But before that, several types of transformations will occur on the planet to foster the acceleration of this process. So we are just right there before these 30 something years before 2057. And do you think we're gonna fly this time in an airplane with air conditioning? What do you think? Tell me. Or it's going to be bumpy. It's going to be bumpy, right? I'm not here to scare you, right? I'm just reflecting what Chico Xavier told us in 1971. It's going to be bumpy. It's not a cruise ship, right? 
if several types of transformations will occur on the planet to foster the acceleration of this process, few will awaken. Isn't that true? Few will awaken. But many will be able to work with its neighbors, trying to awaken the consciences that sleep. That's all about spiritism, commitment. That's our task. If we are already awakened, are we? What do you think? John? Yeah, we, are we or not? We are awakened, right? Because we know Jesus' words. We know Alan Kardec's works. And we get to know from 100 years to now all the 545 books of Chico Xavier. And that lots of other writers also, right? So we can say that we shall be awakened already. And we must work with our neighbors to awaken them also. Otherwise, they we were still sleeping, a sleeping beauty. <laughs> and Emmanuel, Chico Xavier proceeded. Emmanuel tells us that in one way or another, we all, spirits bound to earth, will keep in our intimate the notion of the end of time. This is not only in spiritism. I'm talking to Catholic people, to Protestant people, to Jewish people, and they all feel that this time is a special time all over the world. Buddhist people also. Ufologists also are talking about that. So it's not the end of the world, but it's the end of one time. What time is that? That is ending. Trials and atonements. This word of trials and atonements are ending. But at the same way, at the same time, it is a new dawn, right? The dawn of a new word of regeneration. And Chico proceeded telling us some understand this process in a more serene way. Others will have to wait for the painful experience that awakens consciousness. Which one are we? You tell me. John. in a serene way, right? We should be at least more serene. That's the thing, right? That's why we need the self-restoration to understand that in a serene way. And Chico told us the recipe work and love with Jesus, this is the way. We very likely will face painful years ahead of us, but as the spirit of Emmanuel clarifies, God does not allow pain without medication for the necessary relief. And we have the medication. We have all the instructions, we have the books, we have the knowledge, we have uh, the reflections on the, those books. I'm not talking about one book, right? I'm not ta talking about 10 books. I'm talking about hundreds of books. Do you really think that the higher spirits, the mentors, 
that were surrounding the work of Allan Kardec in the 19th century. And after that, they were surrounding the work of Chico Xavier in the 20th century. Did it for no reason. Because they are the real servers of Jesus trying to awaken us here on the face of earth, right? But there is an objective to their work. Their work is meant to be, and meant to, to be known and understood and studied way ahead of us for the centuries to come. And we, spiritists, are blessed ones because we have already access to that work even if we don't understand it in the whole picture we have already access all this knowledge for what just to put in our library at home or just to read comfortably between, oops, sorry, between Netflix time? No, for sure not. We are, are also called to seed the word of Jesus, to seed, uh, to sow the, the, the blessed words of spiritism. And Chico Xavier in the book, uh, Lições de Sabedoria, Wisdom Lessons, that were organized by Dr. Marlene Nobre, told her, let us prepare for a word of fraternity, true fraternity in regards to the community of nations. Are we there yet? What do you think? No. no. True fraternity in regards to the community of nations. We are far away from this time. But we have we must prepare for that time. Let us prepare, said Chico, to embrace the children of other lands, seeking the desired peace that was so difficult to be found by them. We can see those children. Brazil is receiving hundreds and thousands of children from Venezuela these days. From Argentina, from the African world, nation, sorry, African nations. This very same time, also America used to receive them also, right? So it is a difficult time, but we must embrace all. Otherwise, we will not understand that we are really brothers and sisters. And she could told us, let us all vibrate for peace. Let us pray that we are not caught in unpleasant surprises, conflict, useless desperation because we need unity and work ever more intense. So let's put aside all kinds of material, unpleasant things, conflict, surprises, useless desperation that we, you normally use to, to face problems at work problems in our profession, problems with our family, problems in the spiritual movement. Let us put aside everything and have a call for unity, for peace, for a better and intense work. That's why Chico Xavier received all the works of the spirit, Andrea Luis, to awaken us. Like the first one, Nosso Lar, you call our home, right? 
that right? And Emmanuel wrote about that book on the 7th of July, 1943. Uh, Chico was already psychographing because he started psychographing the book on the 31st of March of 1943. And in July, Emmanuel wrote, it's in the book, Deus Conosco, God with us. This message, all of those messages that I'm going to pass through were received in the gospel at home at the Joviano family in Pedro Leopoldo, where Chico Xavier attended twice a week, every Tuesday and every Wednesday night. And on the 7th of July, 1943, Emmanuel wrote about our home. Let's observe the similar kind of service because the author intends to offer us every possible detail of his stay at a colony of transition among thousands of colonies of this nature. He calls the attention for the organizational details that surround the planet Earth. First revelation, Emmanuel is telling us that Nosular, our home, is just one colony, that there are thousands of colonies of that nature around the world. Of course, here in Washington, D.C., you have a very different colony from Nosular, right? In the, the spiritual plans of India, they have also different colonies. In the spiritual plans of Japan, also very different colonies. In the spiritual plans of Russia, of South Africa, of Uganda, of Australia, of Argentina, Mexico, of course, because we are different in our knowledge. We cannot pretend everything is the same in the spiritual plan. Emmanuel told us that because God respects our differences and awaits that we can be awakened to higher knowledge. Neil Lucio told about this book on the 18th of August of 1943. The suggestions in this book are immense. And it is a valuable program for all department of activities on Earth. Without you feel, the vibrations of your mind rise towards higher spheres. Every time we read, we meditate about those books. Neil Lucio told us that without our conscious knowledge, our minds can go up and receive uh, a higher potential of uh, help from the spiritual plan. We wish that the author of the book, Our Home, can continue unraveling certain misunderstandings and putting the responsibility on man itself. Emmanuel wrote that on the night on the 8th of September, sorry, 1943. It is not so easy to meet, to meet such efforts in the service of love toward the spiritual ascension. Because it is, it is showing us that from, from centuries, we misunderstood God's word. We misunderstood Jesus' word. And we have to know that our own responsibility is at task, is our task. And then uh, he, he wrote, may Jesus allow and release the edification of one more detail of the spiritual construction already mentalized by those that guide us 
in the higher spheres. The educational work is very vast in these pages that have begun with our home. So the second step was the messengers. And Emmanuel is telling us that he was in the edification, he was a spiritual construction, one step at a time. <coughs> Sorry. These pages prepare us more efficiently and more and more and store more real notions about the efforts by the disconnected spirits. The spirit of comprehension will be more productive, more spontaneous in view of the short revelations, however, uniquely expressive. So this was wrote by Neil Lucio on the 12th of August, 1943, and uh, about the, the book, The Messengers. And although all the revelations were short, he's telling us they are uniquely expressive for our, our own productive, spontaneous view of the higher plans and our commitment to them. Here is Carlos Chagas, Andrea Luis. And then you also talked about the, the, the book also on the 26th of January, 1944. We may believe that for the spiritual education of the incarnated individual, this effort presents very serious inference for the accuracy of the concepts that the messenger has arrived using all the possibilities of simplification at his service. So we can see that Andrea Luis had to simplify the most so that we could understand him, right? We live in a time of great inner revelations. In our point of view, wrote Emmanuel on the 10th of April, 1944. In our point of view, it is an invaluable service because of the technical details that in, it offers relatively to our exchanging work and cooperation with the plan of the flesh. So we could get more knowledge about the interrelation between the spiritual plans and our work here on earth. You can see that every book has a focus, right? Every book has a purpose. And on the 11th of January of 44, Emmanuel wrote, each page of Andrea Luis should be well studied for us to observe the extent of which, the extent to which we can be useful in the advancement of the truth. Are we studying the works of Andrea Luis? What do you think? Yes, good to know. Good to know. But this is not true for every spirit center. And that's, that's sad because most of the spirit center are putting aside the works of Andrelis and are not studying it enough, right? And it's good to know that Virginia and uh, the Spiritist Society of Virginia is studying it. Even the children, wonderful, because you, you are doing what they expect you to do, right? Because we should study for, a, for to observe the extent of which we can be useful to the advancement of the truth. What he's telling is that those books are only advancement of the truth, not all the truth. 
but they are kind of advancements of the truth so that we can prepare ourselves to the greater truths ahead of us, right? Chico Xavier once told me that if we get to know the whole truth at once, we could not bear it. We don't have the mind to bear it. That's why God loves us so much by the protection of Jesus that we are having advancements of the truth century after century, right? Hence the need to under and maturation of each reasoning. We need to wonder and to think, meditate, the maturation of each reasoning wrote in those books. Andrea Luis is the efficient author of the services. However, one ought to obey the others to others that direct us from above and desire with justice to know what we are doing with the teachings that are given to us. They received the book from above. Once Chico Xavier told me that Andrea Luiz was the messenger. He is not the sole author of everything. And you can see the differences between the books, right? You can see how different is the book uh, Evolution into Words, which is completely different from the book Mac uh, mediumship mechanisms, which is completely different from the book Nosolar, Our Home. Because of what? Because Shiko told me that those books were written by a commission of 12 wisdom, uh, make a sabius, wise, wise yeah, sages, 12 sages, 12 wise men from above that wrote, wrote everything. They were the ones that censored everything, that censored Emmanuel, that censored Neo Lucio, that censored Andrea Luis, so that we could receive what we could have and what we could understand at that time. And I I was kind of, you know, the, the guy that always, was always asking, Chico, tell me one name. One, just one name, and he forget about it. I'm not telling you. And after years and years, and I, oh, tell me just one of those 12. And Shiko told me, okay, I'll just tell you once, one name, and never ask me again. <laughs> and he told me, Socrates is one of them. How is Socrates in English? Socrates, Socrates. okay. So one of the, the higher spirits that wrote those books is Socrates. Okay. Uh, Emmanuel wrote also, to establish the average of what should be uh, said according to the general possibilities of all those from whom the work is in, for whom the work is intended is a work that takes uh, takes place after many tests, suggestions, retouches about the subject and several discussions. You see, it was not, it was not, uh, the, those books were not uh, done at once. They received uh, commissions of studies and uh, suggestions, many tests, retouches, uh, several discussions about the subject so that we could receive what we uh, deserve and also something that we could have in our minds to deal with, right? And to evolve. And for an, al 
and for an almost report of the incarnated man's life in the sphere of those that are out of the circles of the flesh and vice versa. And the affirmations, all the affirmations require a lot of consideration. So we must not take those work for granted. They are so, they have an utmost importance in our spiritual life from now on. We are workers, said, wrote Emmanuel, among the spiritual grown-ups and the children of understanding. Which one are the children of understanding? We are. We are the children. And Emmanuel, Neo Lucio, Andra Luis, Bezerra de Menezes, they were between us and the grown-ups of the spiritual world, right? It is indispensable to attend all without harming anyone. We are discussing now the better way to undertake this thesis rel relatively to prayer, to prayer. Let us wait and then come the book, Missionaries of Light. In the, wo the words of uh, Emmanuel, the thesis of prayer. Missionaries of the Light is a new work that we deem to great, of great importance to awaken dormant consciences. So the sleeping beauties, right? Urged to snatch the general con conceptions from the less dignified field of least effort. We must take this at account. Uh, those books, they are not, you know, to caress us. No. They are the call for the most transformation time in our history on earth, the most important transformation time. We are now living on the planet Earth, on the surface of Earth, at the most important time of our spiritual life, of our many incarnations before. This is the time, because we don't have any more time. We are facing maybe another uh, expel, right? Another expulsion as we faced in Capella 12,000 years ago. How do you say it? Expulsion? Alan Kardec tells us exile, 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 sorry. Are we going to be exiled again or not? It's up to us. If you study the book, uh, A Caminho da Luz, On the Way to the Light, you can see the exile that the people that lived in the planet at the Capella system suffered around 12,000 years ago until 7,000 years ago in phases, right? Most of us are them. I asked Chico, how do we know that we already were exiled from another planet? And Chico told me, it's easy. Mm -hmm. Just ask yourself, do you believe in reincarnation? Yes, do you? Yes. yes. Of course, right? So that, that's an attest. Uh, attestat, okay. Attestat. Attest. The proof that we already have been exiled once. Are we going to be another time exiled? Because we are too 
comfort in our way of living, not doing the way, not doing the works of Jesus. Impossible is, said Emmanuel, the prevalence of such illusion. That is why we desire to ring the bell of the reality. That's what those books are about. They are ringing the bell of reality, the spiritual reality in which we are all taking part, right? But heaven, nor the immediate happy words, but ourselves with our virtues and faults, edifications and deficiencies, working out in the waters of universal struggles to make us worthy to our Father that granted us life. Similar service is the guideline for the more awakened consciences that are effectively interested in their spiritualization. Wrote Emmanuel on the 4th of November, 1945. So are we really interested in our own spiritualization or not? Or are we attending religious service just like an obligation? Oh, I have to go to the center every Friday night. So that I, I'm sorry. So that I feel, you know, it, it was like, like going to church, the Catholic church, listening to the prayers of the priest, having the ostia, and talking to the priest all your sins of, and get relieved of that, right? In spiritism, it doesn't work like that. Missionaries of the Light. Neo Lucy wrote about that book also on the 18th of April, 1945. These pages are the spiritual alarm ringtones, awakening hearts and consciences. With time, you will observe the vivid clarities that gush from this spring. So this is very important, right? We can observe the vivid clarities that gush from that spring, that revelation. The narratives of our home and the clarifications of the messengers constitute an introductory curse for the understanding of human activities beyond grave that in missionaries of the light were highlighted with great discretion and legitimate observations. So we can see that third book was more important, right? It touches subjects of great importance one of them, mediumship. Mediumship with Jesus, which is different, right? It touches a very profound subject because we are all evolving in our existence here to understand that we all have the capacity to communicate with the spiritual world and to have a, a, a role in this process of spiritualization of the whole world. You will observe that extraordinary paths are drawn for the thought, opening to it new spheres of salvation service. We know that thought is everything surrounding the subject of mediumship, right? It's the basis of mediumship. So if we understand that the practice of mediumship with Jesus and the, the teachings of spiritism 
open new spheres of salvation for us. If you practice your mediumship, you can do just passes. You can be a handwrite uh, psychograph. You can be a uh, speaking medium. You can counsel people, right? You can have your intuition to the greater good. Everyone, some mediums have the touch to cure, to cure people, right? And all those works can accelerate our uh, deaths, our deaths from past lives. In the matter of the community, right? And, uh, and then came the workers of the life eternal. And Emmanuel wrote, we are pleased with the open possibility of the new work by Andrea Luis, workers of life eternal, fulfilling the requests by our fellow fellows herein. This friend will make possible the description of some details of the lower zone, the umbrow, some details, not all of them, which almost Almost all of the incarnated stop by stop by on the first days of the beyond. And one time she could told us that the umbrow begins in our nose. <laughs> That's the, the beginning of the umbrow, in the point of our nose. So we are most surrounded by umbrow. Don't don't fear that because we are in the lower zone of the umbra, right? The umbra is from here, the Earth's crust, until 50 kilometers up in this space. One time I asked Chico where the city of our home is located, and he told me that our home is the spiritual city related to the city of Rio de Janeiro, where Carlos was born. Yeah. And it, it, uh, it's right in, in the surround, surroundings of a, another plan, a higher plan, right? But it is still on the umbral. And it is situated around 50,000. 50 kilometers or 50,000 meters up to the, the sea level. Uh, the plane that uh, we took to come here from Brazil uh, flew around 11,000 uh, 11, meters or 11 kilometers, so almost five, five times higher. Okay? He will describe whatever is possible because higher authorities determine, in spite of our wishes for more detailed narratives of purgatorial suffering. So, Emmanuel, Andrea Luiz, Dr. Bezerra de Menezes, Neo Lúcio, they asked more that, so that Andrea Luiz could reveal more about the umbrow. But the higher authorities, that I told you about, the 12 ones, they said, no, it's not time for that. Later on, we're going to see that in the book Liberation, right? But at that time, the 10th of October 1945, higher authorities determined, in spite of their wishes, that Andrea Luis would describe whatever was possible. It is, it is recommended that the apprentices receive the teaching of truth with measure and calm. This is important for us also, because if we receive new friends coming to our spiritist centers, right, we must also treat them with measure and calm. 
many put people are not prepared yet for that revelations. So this is also a, a good teach teaching for us. Uh, on the 13th of March, 1947, Emmanuel wrote, our brother seeks to assist devoted to address the issue of helping troubled entities, not in complete madness process, yet there in the material realm and here in our cycles. So uh, in the greater world touches the subject of the troubled minds, not only here on earth, but also the troubled minds in the spiritual plans. We consider the new works of Andrea Luis in the greater world to be of great interest in the defense against the imbalance, against evil. So they are preparing us to defend ourselves, right? To defend the, the spirit center, to defend the communities against the imbalanced one, against the evil ones. He wrote that on the uh, sec, uh, 2nd of December, 1947. And in the 10th of August, 1947, he also wrote, the beginning of the new work seems to serve an important sector of the sowing of spiritism, such as the mental disorders that are not limited to life in physiological vessel. And we understand with this book that most of the people that are mentally ill here on earth stayed mentally ill after that. So death is not a miracle thing that will happen to them. And it's very important that uh, fr from this book in the greater world, we have this uh, Giancarlo Lucchetti, Jorge Daya Jr., Desio Andoli Jr., Giuliani Gonçalves, and Alessandra Lucchetti that wrote uh, a uh, article talking about the uh, pineal gland, right? And it was published in the Neuroendocrinology Letters in 2013 as a scientific work, historical and cultural aspects of the pineal gland, comparison between the theories provided by spiritism in the 1940s and the current scientific evidence, showing that the spirit of Andrea Luis, what he wrote through Chico Xavier in 1947, is already known nowadays at the scientific world about the, the function of the pineal gland. And here is the, the published material of this uh, neuro endocrinal letter of 2013. And then came the, the book Liberation. Emmanuel told us on the 13th of October, 1948, if possible, our brother André Luis will start his new obligations after tomorrow. So, so that we know that the book started to be writing, written on the 12th, on the, sorry, on the 15th of October, 1948. It will be a job that we, the disconnect one, will focus not because it is beautiful, or different from others, but because it involves a subject that is very close to the human sphere, subject to expose certain phases of our struggle with the interior, with the inferior brothers, that is, the ignorant and less equipped to do good with Christ. And I think this is very neat because first, Emmanuel referred to those you know, troubled minds in the spiritual world, like inferior brothers. And then he corrected himself by writing, that is, the ignorant and less equipped 
to do good with Christ. This is very neat. Uh, the reference here are on those books that we published in the Vinha de Luz Editora, Cementerio de Luz, Sowing of Light, Deus Conosco, God with us, the first one from the Neo Lucio, the second one, Cementerio de Paz, Sowing of Peace, and Colheita do Bem, uh, which is Harvest of Good. Okay. And from Emmanuel, Deus Conosco and Iluminura. And here I can close with Chico Xavier in the United States in 1965. Some of the pictures in 1965 and 1966 with the Haddad family and other persons, Ruiz Guerrero Ovalle and his family with Chico Xavier and Valdo Vieira in 1965 here. On the other one, Chico Xavier at the public, New York Public Library, where he and Valdo Vieira published The Word of the Spirit, their first book written in English. It was uh, launched uh, in the 17th, 17th of May, 1966. So, he was trying from that time to give America spiritism and what we are doing about it. How many, how many years? Do, do the math. <laughs> <laughs> 1965 to 2023. 58, 60 years. That's it. Question, what was the role of Chico Xavier's mediumship on the planetary transition? That is my ask, my question. And I found out that Mr. Fernando Worm from the state of Rio Grande do Sul in Brazil, uh, he wrote in the book, The Bridge, which is now published by the Rio Grande do Sul Federation, Spiritist Federation, he wrote, the work of the medium Xavier is a remarkable work of a spiritual team whose plain and clear goal is the completion of the third revelation as it was promised by Christ. May God help us to understand that. Thank you so much, God. Questions? Okay. Questions, friends? Okay. 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 Yeah. Yes. Because in the first book he talked talked about himself, right? right? His experience in the umbrow. And there is uh, one correction that Chico told me that the first edition, the Chico when Chico Xavier psychographic, uh, he told uh, he wrote through Chico that he spent two years in the umbrella, right? But at that time, the process of publishing a book was very uh, mechanical, or uh, how, how can I say? It needed uh, people to put the, the numbers and the words in uh, different plates, right? And they changed it to for eight. And then in the second edition, Chico told me that Emmanuel demanded that Federação, the Fab, should change eight for two. And they refused because uh, it's already 
written eight. So if we change in the second edition, it would be a problem. So that all, and then they didn't change it. But as a matter of fact, Andrea Luisi stayed two years in the um, route. Because he was not a bad guy, right? What was his problem? Materialism. He was a person, he was a scientist, uh, the, the scientist Carlos Chagas. He almost got the Nobel Prize uh, for the discovery of a disease, all the process of disease, the disease of Chagas, right? But he was, he himself tells us that he was not prepared for the spiritual life. He told us that when he was incarnated, he never wondered about afterlife. He was all having his materialistic life. And when he went to church, he was only to attend the social event. He was not preoccupied about spiritualization so that he would not prepare himself. Uh, there is a phrase there that I like very much that he did not prepare the, uh, his spiritual senses. The spiritual senses and also organs. Yes. He did not prepare spiritual organs for his spiritual uh, uh, body. And that's why he needed to stay in the umbrella until he awakened and of course he did by praying after two years he got the first pray and then he was uh helped by clarencio right not that the the higher mentors didn't help him before they did his mother also but he could not see them because he spent his life all thinking all his life thinking about materialistic things. How could, could he see other plans or higher plans if he didn't believe on them? Right? Any other questions? It's interesting. Yeah. always been this. Since I was little, it's always been my fascination with death. Oh, I see. And then I got closer and closer to the end of the incarnation stage. And so the miracle signs. Yeah. Uh, there is a, a book, the first book really that Chico Xavier psychographed was the book from his mother, Letter of a Dead Woman, right? In that book, she told, it's the second published book, but really it was the first one that she, he psychographed. And in that book, she told Chico that she could see in the spiritual plan that many people don't believe in reincarnation there. Really, yeah, it's written in that book because they they don't have the concept. They don't believe it. No matter uh, if they have instructions and spirits from higher plans that come and instruct them and they still don't believe it. Yeah, after they still have trouble. They still have trouble. Because because it's 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 the uh, the individuality of it, each of us that God of course respects. Exactly. And she tells us that these religions in fact they made um, things actually really separate for people to understand and to live in spirituality. Actually that's how I keep your presolving. No, that, that is the song. Yeah. Yeah. yeah.
So I just made one comment that um, Chico's mom tells us that these spiritual uh, and religious concepts, they make things even harder for people when they disconnect, actually, because they can't believe what is going on and they don't have tools to deal with every single thing that that's happening. Of course, uh, all of us that has a, a spiritual or spiritist or, or even the ones in the Far East that believe in reincarnation, for, for all of us, it's more easy to understand because we already know it here on Earth, right? He's still be struggling with that. Come back again. Yes, many times. Yeah. No. Okay, so I'm gonna continue. To, <laughs> no, I was just making a comment uh, on the book uh, that I just read for the for the summer challenge. The uh, and the, the life goes on in a vida continua. It like I don't want to whoever didn't read the book, but through a good good part of the book, they are still not aware that they are in this spiritual world. Exactly. It's so interesting, right? There is a resistance, and and um, and it seems like you know in in the in the um, as, in, as incarnated, they had access to information, they even discussed about it, yes. right? And even though with all of that information, they still had a hard time understanding. So so that's, that's a good book to kind of give, give us a little bit of a review of how it, you know people feel like. Yeah, thank you. This is, thank you. This is important because every time that Chico Xavier was asked by a person that has just lost a loved one, you know, uh, and was suffering the death of the loved one. This is the book that Shiku would recommend. Life goes on, right? And life goes on. Because, because of that, because in the beginning of the book, we have two persons that are disconnected. They have almost the same physical problem. They got operated and they disconnected and they had a Catholic background and they were doubting where they were. Who is, what hospital is that? And one time, one, yeah, yeah. who is paying the bill? Nobody asks for the bill. So that's a problem. If you, you don't have the bill, you you begin to, to realize <laughs> you're not in the world. <laughs> I, just want, I just want to reinforce because uh, my father-in-law passed, you know, I had this transition yesterday, right? Oh. 98 years old. Oh my God. And then I was talking to Felipe and he was telling me about the book, but then he told me there was a movie as well. Yes. Yes. I watch five in the morning this morning. And I'm still in, so impacted by it because the teachings go so much beyond uh, yes. this, you know, the whole piece that you shared with us about the connection between family members and yes. and how everything is really connected. It's just I don't amazing. Know, I, I feel that I'm still. I feel that when I left, yeah. I finished the movie, went to my kitchen, and I like, am I in my house? <laughs> <laughs> is this home? You know, because it's, it's, it's that thing about. I don't know, it just made me question the sense of reality yeah. and yeah. also how, I know, I feel this unconditional trust since I started studying of uh, how everything is guided by a higher realm, you know, and it's, it's yeah, if you haven't seen this movie, it's on YouTube with the whole yeah. thing, Yeah, it's so about an hour and 40 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Before, but the book is better. the book is something else. Like, I, I, I just, you know, but you have like, to read and, the and, book. I, and I, I got that, but I, it's, it's um, anyway. I just <laughs> if you just have two hours, like I did this five in the morning today, you know, it's just like I just had this urge. Um, 
They will, yeah. right? Yeah, I mean, the seed was planted. On the here. seed was planted, yeah. Yeah, you know, my uh, although all on my mother's side, they were all, they are all spiritists because they got to know Shiko since Shiko was a little children, little child, and all the family of her family. Uh, work in Spirit Center in Pedro Leopoldo, in Belo Horizonte, in Bauru, in Rio de Janeiro, in Sao Paulo. And although of that, uh, all of them are spiritists for a long time, my mother wasn't. She was the one, you know, always skeptic and always criticizing everything. And, but one day, she had to be in an operation, and we we uh, went with her to the hospital in Belo Horizonte, and we chose a room and everything and so on. And then she went to the, hot, the the operation desk, and we decided to change the room because it was kind of uh, small. And then we changed the room for a. A, a better room with more space for all the family and everything. And then she, when she got back from the operation, she opened her eyes and looked to a different room. And I thought, oh my God, <laughs> this is the one. <laughs> I'm not, and she didn't see us, she didn't see anyone. He knew, she knew, right? And it was so funny because she was already afraid of, be, of being dead already. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. <laughs> okay, friends. So we're now going to prepare ourselves for the spiritual classes, okay? Let us visualize Master Jesus looking at us with his compassionate look, loving smile, joyful heart, illuminated hands that touch our heads. showering us with his loving mercy. We breathe in and out, feeling molecules of love being transfused from Jesus' heart to us. We breathe in and feel the joy of living, breathing out. We let go of any toxins from the mind and the body. Breathing in, renewed hope. Breathing out, letting go of doubts and concerns as we breathe in. We feel this boost of courage that comes from Jesus breathing out. We let go of hesitations. And now Jesus looks at us in the eyes and kindly offers us an embrace of love, his healing heart. Let us accept this embrace 
with deep gratitude. And feel Master Jesus embracing us, fortifying us for new challenges and opportunities in life. Now we open the doors of our homes so Master Jesus can enter it. Let us say how grateful we are that he's visiting our homes, visualizing him in our homes. And his messengers together with him cleansing the spiritual environment, rescuing those who are in need of help. And sealing our defenses as he puts a vase of healing flowers on our dining table, where at each meal will be provided with the remedies that we need for our balance. Thank you, Master Jesus. Thank you for your loving presence, for the certainty that life is continuous, that we're so loved and so well taken care for, that we are honored to participate in the co-creation of the good on earth. Thank you for bringing Chico Xavier, Emmanuel, Neil Lucio, Andra Lewis, and all the wonderful spirits or tireless in their good deeds. Thank you for awakening us. And thank you for bringing friends from afar into realms. To open our eyes more deeply and our willingness to share the good. With your permission, we close this moments of reflection, study, and treatment for our souls. So be